Hello everyone, my name is Lu Yaoshi, and today I'm going to present our work on automatic diagnosis of pulmonary embolism using an attention-guided framework, a large-scale study. Pulmonary embolism, also called PE, is a sudden blockage in the pulmonary artery by a clump of material, most often a blood clot, that is usually formed in the deep vein of patient's legs and travels in the bloodstream up to the lungs. PE is a life-threatening disorder associated with high mortality, with an estimated 100,000 deaths per year in the US. One out of four people who have PE die without warning, and up to 30% of people die within the first month of diagnosis. Therefore, prompt diagnosis and immediate treatment is crucial. Contrast enhanced chest CT is commonly used for PE diagnosis, where PE can be visualized as perfusion defects, as can be seen on the examples on the right. However, when the lesions involve peripheral pulmonary vascular regions, the subsegmental PEs are really small, causing increased false positive findings. There are also confounding factors, including the poorly field contrast, other pulmonary diseases, lymphoid tissues, image artifacts, and image noise that could all lead to false positive findings. In addition, P detection is quite time-consuming and dependent on the experience of radiologists. Therefore, our goal is to develop a deep learning-based CAD method that could detect PE with high accuracy. Basically, a network can be trained with pixel-level annotated data or patient-level labels. Training with pixel-level annotated data has benefits of providing better interpretability of the network with higher accuracy. However, data annotation is quite time-consuming for radiologists, and therefore the annotated data are often limited. And because of this, those networks often have sub-optimal scalability. On the other hand, end-to-end -end training with patient-level labels can access largely available training data with better scalability of the network. But the networks are often less interpretable with potentially worse performance. In this work, we combine these two training strategies into a hybrid training, which can benefit from the advantages of both sides. Our hybrid training has two stages. In stage one, we use image slabs and the corresponding pixel level annotations to train the network A. Then later in stage two, we fix the ways of the network A and use network A as a feature encoder. Then all the image slabs in the volumetric CD images are processed by network A and then sent to network B uh, to produce patient level PE prediction. Network B is then trained by comparing the prediction with the patient level PE labels. Our pixel level annotations were labeled by radiologists every 10 mm from CT volumetric images. And our goal here is, is to utilize those pixel-level annotations to train an image encoding network that focuses attention on PE. Recently, class activation map, also known as attention map, has been used to interpret the convolution neural networks. The attention map can indicate the discriminated image regions used by the CNN to identify a particular class. Later, Guided attention inference networks gain has been developed, which show that attention maps can be supervised while training the network. We performed attention training on a ResNet 18 in stage 1. The input is a 2.5D image slab with 5 consecutive slices, and we have the annotation mask corresponding to the center image slice. While training the network, in addition to the classification laws, Based on the PE label of the input image slab, we also have the attention loss to enforce the attention maps to be consistent with the downsampled annotation masks. Here we provide more details because in our data the images have a, a variety of slice thickness ranging from 0.5 to 5 mm. We first resemble the images to have a consistent 2.5 mm slice thickness. And we sample more than 10,000 slabs of annotated pairs from more than 1,600 positive volumetric images. And we sampled the same amount of negative slabs randomly 
from around 600 negative volumetric images. And all the images were cropped to the center 384 by 384, with the values mapped to between 0 and 255. We used 80% of the data for training and the other 20% for validation. We trained the network for 100 epochs and saved the model with the highest validation accuracy. Here are the results on the validation side. We first show some example attention maps. As can be seen, the attention maps produced by the network with attention training are more localized and show strong agreement with the annotation mask produced by the radiologists. On the other hand, the attention maps produced by the network without attention training are widely distributed and most focus on the irrelevant regions where no PE is present. On the right side, we show the ROC curves on the validation side. The network trained with attention supervision clearly outperformed the one without attention training. Note that even without attention training, the network still obtained pretty good PE prediction accuracy on the validation side, most likely due to overfitting, even though the network's attention was clearly not focused on the PE regions. Uh, moving next to stage two, in stage two, we are dealing with volumetric CT images. The images were first cropped to the center 384 by 384 with value mapping, same as stage one. We then identify lung regions using a lung mask uh, produced by our in-house lung segmentation method. The identified lung region were further resized to 200 slices. We then sample 50 image slabs from it. In the end, we are dealing with data with size 50 by 384 by 384 by 5. Once we have the 50 image slabs processed by the pre-trained ResNet, we need another network to generate the data and provide overall P prediction for an image volume. To account for spatial context between the image slabs in a volumetric image, we use a recurrent framework. Here we use a bidirectional convolutional LSDM to interpret and summarize the patterns among correlated samples. The LSDM modules were applied twice, then an average pooling layer was used to integrate the features along the z-axis. At the end, a fully connected layer summarized the results and provided PE prediction. Instead of using the classification results or the attached maps of the ResNet as input to the recurrent framework, we use the last convolutional layer after activation to provide complete information embedded in the feature maps. We also try to use the classification results and the attention maps from the ResNet as input to the recovery network in stage 2, but the results are not nearly as good. Here we show some of the training parameters. In stage 2, we only need to use the classification laws, and here we use the binary cross entropy laws. We chose the Atom Optimizer. We trained our network for 50 epochs and saved the model with the highest validation accuracy. In stage 2 training, the training data actually contains two parts. The first part is the more than 2,000 annotated studies that we use in stage 1, but here we only use them as labeled volumetric studies. In addition, we also have more than 8,000 labeled volumetric images where more than 4,000 of them being positive studies and more than 4,000 of them being negative studies. Our testing data contains around 500 positive studies and more than 1,600 negative studies. We created three testing scenarios. In scenario one, we use both attention laws and the classification laws in stage one. But in stage two, we only use the limited data that we use in stage one to provide patient level labels. In scenario 2, we only use classification laws in stage 1, but not the attention laws. But in stage 2, we use a large amount of label data. In scenario 3, we use both the attention laws in stage 1 and the large amount of label data in stage 2. As can be seen, scenario 3 gave us the best results, which show that both attention supervision and the large amount of label data are important in improving the results. This also demonstrates the scalability of our pipeline. If we have more label data from another hospital, we can only fine-tune the stage 2 of the network using the new data. 
we also compared with the state of the art for some PE night. In PE night, their training data was labeled on a slice level for the presence or absence of a PE. However, our data were annotated every 10 mm in stage 1, and we only used the patient level label data in stage 2. Because of this inconsistency, we did not run PE night on our data, and we only showed their reported results on their data set. We also implemented the 3D CN for comparison. The 3D CN model starts with the I3D model, which is the 3D CN pre-trained on video action recognition dataset, followed by convolutional LCM networks. This network structure has demonstrated success in acute aortic syndrome detection. In our study, this model was trained only on our patient-level labeled PE data. Here we show the comparison results. For PE-Net, we included the results on both their internal and external testset. Although the sizes of the testsets were both around 200, and they were all from a single clinical set with a single imaging protocol. Our proposed method was tested on a much larger testset, which come from multiple clinical sets with mixed protocols, and we still obtain much better results. Here, mixed protocols mean that our data contains both contrast-enhanced chest CT and CT pulmonary angiograms. They have different dose levels and different image reconstruction kernels with different slice thickness. So our task is actually more challenging. Our proposed method was also compared with the 3D, 3D CN model and obtained better results. One benefit of the proposed framework is its ability to provide localized attention maps. Recall that the ResNet in stage 1 can output the attention maps for an image slab. By integrating the attention maps for each slab together, we can have a patient level attention map that indicate possible PE lesions on the patient level. Here we show two examples. The first column is the contrast enhanced CT images, and the second column is the corresponding attention maps. As can be seen, the highlighted attention focus regions can accurately identify the PE regions, which could potentially serve as a quick and convenient tool to help radiologists localize PE regions. Note that this PE localization information cannot be used for diagnostic purpose because of the potential false positives. Instead, they should only be used as references. There are several future directions regarding this work. First, currently in stage 1, we use ResNet 18 instead of any deeper network to balance between the performance and our GPU resources. Although using more efficient network structures, for example, DanceNet, can be explored in the future. And second, currently the weights for classification loss and attention loss in stage 1 are the same, although these weights can be further optimized in the future. Third, we can explore a fully end-to-end -end trading where the weights of the ResNet can also be updated while training with the patient-level label data, and hopefully that can bring in some improvements. To summarize, in this work, we presented a deep learning model to detect PE on volumetric contrast-enhanced CT scans using a two-stage hybrid training strategy. In stage 1, we showed that training with attention loss on pixel-level annotated data can improve the network's localization ability. And the second stage convolutional LSTM network can reduce false positives on patient-level prediction. Our evaluation involves the largest number of patient studies so far among all the research studies on automatic PE detection. We achieved state-of-the-art PE detection results while providing attention maps for radiologists as references. Our proposed methods can also be applied to other detection problems as well. Thank you for your attention, and I would like to take any questions.